Yes. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to the fifth press availability uh, with the Alaska House Majority Coalition. I'm joined by the co-chair of House Finance, Representative Paul Seaton from Homer, Scott Kawasaki, member of the Finance Committee, and the chairman of the Joint Armed Services Committee, and Representative Stutes from Kodiak, who chairs the Fisheries Committee. A lot going on in Juneau uh, this week, and a lot of activity in the subcommittees. Looking at my list of things going on, we've got the Alaska Children's Trust in town, we've got the Associate, Alaska Association of School Boards, uh, Pacific Seafood Processors Association, the Fairbanks Chamber of Commerce. We've got the Harbor Masters, not to mention a lot of other things going on. Um, subcommittees, budget subcommittees, Representative Seaton are going uh, full bore, as well as the House Finance Committee and all of our major other policy committees. I should note as well before I turn things over to uh, the good co-chair from finance that uh, tonight is a very special evening because we have... Um, at four o'clock, the dedication of the House Finance Committee room, uh, which heretofore will be known as the Al Adams Finance Committee room. And uh, this is being held in conjunction with Alaska Federation of Natives uh, meetings that are taking place in Centennial Hall as we speak. So at four o'clock, that will take place. And then um, we're going to uh, go across the street to the Terry Miller building and uh, with uh, the AFN board and all of the folks that are in town, uh, have, uh, uh, I think it's about a 15 minutes slide deck uh, presentation in memory of uh, former legislator Adams. And so we invite you all to be there and really looking forward to that event. So Paul, good morning. Uh, good morning uh, and good morning to everyone. Um, I'm pleased that uh, we were able to pass uh, House Bill 287 over to the Senate with only three uh, negative votes. Um, that was, a, I think, a real accomplishment. Uh, it was unfortunate that the uh, minority decided not to agree with the funding uh, of that bill, but we've sent it over and all the options are on the table for the Senate. Um, I am uh, confident that if the uh, Senate uh, agrees with us that uh, the Constitutional Budget Reserve is the best funding mechanism, then we will be uh, on track to come back and have the vote in the House. And I believe that the, set, uh, the House minority at that point in time will agree with uh, funding uh, and go forward to make sure that we get early funding. Remember the system that we have uh, now uh, re keeps funding of education to the last thing that we accomplish in, this, in the uh, budget and that's not a good plan because what happens is every year we're getting these uh, teacher layoff notices going out and you know really disrupts morale it's very inefficient way of running government and we for the first time have come forward with early funding of education a way to get there and take that off the table and will also help us in the end uh, resolve and get out of here on time so um, uh, another light, you mentioned the budget subcommittees. There were 23 last week, and there's 23 meetings this week. So uh, we should be done. The subcommittees are all supposed to have to us by the end of, on the 23rd, um, all the recommendations for full finance to take up the amendment process. And so it will somewhat depend on how many amendments are brought forward outside of the subcommittee processes, whether we can get the budget uh, quickly over to the Senate. But that's, um, that's out of our control, but we will uh, have almost all the amendments done in the subcommittee process that the entire House has been working on because uh, all of those have been on TV. They're all uh, archived and members in the press and Alaskans can go back and look at any subject they want. So. Uh, appreciate that, Mr. Speaker. Representative Stutes, good morning. <clears throat> good morning, Mr. Speaker. Nice to be here. I have been working diligently with my staff on a system to come up with. Uh, I'm sure we're all familiar with House Bill 199. It's been a, of interest to a lot of people, and we're still working on a good system that's going to encompass all the stakeholders, including um, our all of our resources, to end up with a plan that protects our fisheries and allows our resources to um, 
be a part of the system as well. I'm excited about it. We're moving forward with it. Representative Kawasaki. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I just wanted to sort of reiterate what's been going on in the Capitol for the viewers and the watchers. It's obviously that uh, obvious that the House is very, very busy for the folks that are uh, reporting the news. I'm sure you have lots to report on behalf of the House. Uh, you know, our House has been uh, busy from day one. We started off with uh, two a day, uh, two meetings in finance for the first uh, week and a half in order to pass an early education bill. Uh, that was a priority among school districts. Uh, most of the school districts and, uh, and school kids are in town this week uh, to talk to us about that. Uh, that was a, a priority bill of this House, and, uh, and we did that. Um, along with that, we've had budget subcommittees. Our budget subcommittees will close out on time uh, it, by the end of uh, next week. Um, we've had meetings uh, into the evening. We've had meetings on weekends. Uh, I think even the House Finance Committee has about a dozen bills before its calendar today. Um, there is a lot of work going on here. Um, we want to make sure that we're able to get out within the 90-day uh, limit. Um, we're trying very hard to do that. Um, uh, I hope that the other side, uh, the other body, will be able to come to compromise with us uh, and work closely with us as, as we work toward uh, solving this fiscal gap uh, and ensuring that there's, uh, you know, that there's a there's a bright future for our students, for our seniors. Um, I did want to make one note: is that uh, this House came together, uh, both the majority and the Republican minority in order to pass a piece of legislation uh, crucial for seniors. Uh, that's the Senior Benefits Bill, uh, House Bill 236. I think from start to finish, both in the Health and Social Service Committee and the Finance Committee and in the floor, we were able to pass it within, I think, a 30-hour time frame. And that's, I think, an, an, uh, unheard of. Um, just like the education bill is unheard of, having that 25% of our, of our general fund budget passing um, so early in the session. So um, a lot of work's been going on in our House, and, uh, and I think that uh, Speaker Edgman deserves a lot of credit, uh, Representative Seaton, um, members of the Finance Committee also. Thank you. Well, as we turn to questions, we ask everyone, of course, to identify themselves. But let me point out today is uh, we're Orange Day. And uh, I'm wearing an orange tie for the first time ever, I think, <laughs> in honor of that. And um, it's in honor of the Teen and Domestic Violence Month that's taken place and certainly in deference to legislation that we'll be under considering tomorrow on the House floor relating to the Alaska Children's Safety Act and provisions that are more commonly known as a Breeze Law. So, good morning, Steve. Um, Steve Quinn, Channel 11. Um, you folks are uh, celebrating HB 287, but it was sent over to the House without the substance of the funding other than people transportation. Um, why are you so um, optimistic with, without the funding in there? Well, let me just jump in and say that um, I don't know if I'd use the word celebrating, but the fact that uh, I think for the first time in Alaska's history, and if you can say three weeks takes a, is a long time, then consider that the, the normal session is several months long. And if you look back at the last two years, unfortunately, too many months. But the fact that we got that bill over to the Senate in a three-week time span, which, again, and the speed that we do business down here is lightning fast. Our intention was to have it fully funded. We needed a three-quarters majority on the House floor. We couldn't achieve that. But we still sent the bill over. We hope the Senate will act uh, just as swiftly as we did and they will uh, attach a funding source, send it back over to us, we'll sit down, we'll iron out the differences, and we'll, for the first time, I think, in Alaska's history, actually early fund the biggest component of public education, which will help uh, alleviate the uncertainty that school districts face each and every year, and particularly at the teacher level, with, uh, as you all know, with the handing out of pink slips. And, Mr. Speaker, I, I would just say that, uh, you know, I thought it was kind of silly to, uh, project that the Senate Finance Committee would not be able to figure out how to add a funding source. They could take the exact language that we had, the House majority had in the bill, and take that out of the CBR. And if they send that back to us with the CBR, I'm, I am confident that the minority will agree that early funding of education is very important and do it. If, if the Senate decides to take that out of the earnings reserve, uh, they could make that from uh, subtracted from a future draw that we would be taking from the earnings reserve, and we would, um, you know, consider that. I mean, it just depends on the priority of your funding source. And so the options are all on the table for the Senate to 
uh, put whichever funding source that they can uh, think is best in that. James Brooks from the Juno Empire. You had just mentioned the earnings reserve. What's the status of a draw from that, either through Senate Bill 26 or yesterday in the Senate we saw a new vehicle introduced as well? Uh, well, you know, the reality is that this year we do not have, we didn't pass a comprehensive fiscal plan. So we have no other new revenues. Uh, the Senate is kind of, to this point, uh, said that they're not interested in diversifying the revenues of the state of Alaska. They want to keep them concentrated on where they are and taking out savings. So there is going to be a draw from the earnings reserve. There's not enough money in the CBR to fund uh, government uh, without totally wiping it out, and I don't think anybody is wanting to do that. You need at least a billion dollars left in the CBR to function as our cash flow management tool. That's been testified not only by uh, ledge finance, but by uh, Office of Management and Budget. So there will be a draw uh, coming from the earnings reserve. Uh, how that's accomplished can be um, a matter of, will probably be a matter of dispute as, and also the level of that. And so that's what we worry about is that if the Senate wants to take an unsustainable draw from the earnings reserve, that's that five and a quarter or even 5% uh, draw. Uh, we were willing to do in SB 26 a um, five and a quarter percent draw because that would meet new revenues which will come on which would be coming online but it's an unsustainable draw we now know that if you look at the uh, figures from the uh, permanent fund four and a half percent is a sustainable draw and uh, unless you are meeting new revenues coming on you can take a little more on up front but if you're not structurally diversifying your revenues to get more revenues, then you can't take that much because that's an unsustainable draw amount. So I look that, uh, you know, there's going to be differences between the House and the Senate as whether we'll take an unsustainable draw from the earnings reserve. Where, though, is Senate Bill 26? The microphone. Where, though, is Senate Bill 26 in the process? If, if you are intent on getting out of here in 90 days, that needs to be advancing. There needs to be progress on that in order to get that draw or some other bill. Well, actually, that's not correct. I mean, we can take a structured draw without have passing, passing a bill to tell ourselves how that has to be done. As long as we make the calculations that are less than 4.5% on a five, five year of the six years, then we will have a structured draw uh, that is not required by a bill. So SB 26 would be a good thing to do if we can get a uh, system that's going to work in the future, but unfortunately uh, it's not. I mean, the graph that uh, Senator Machiki held up uh, was kind of... Uh, not the real uh, story. If you look at both the Bridgewater um, calculations on their analysis, there's a 58% chance that the entire earnings reserve would be wiped out within 10 years if the, um, uh, if the Senate's plan went through. And the more conservative Callan uh, estimate says that 30% chance the entire earnings reserve would be wiped out within 10 years with the Senate's plan. So those are high percentages when you're talking about losing the earnings reserve, which is the only place where you get the permanent fund dividend. So are people willing to take those kind of risks about getting rid of the permanent fund uh, 